Alrighty, well, now that I got the new tires on this thing, there's one little thing I do have to take care of now that arose when I narrowed it up. The uh, three-point hitch arms like to swing out into the tire now because the way the original um, stops work, they got these, this spring-loaded piece of rod that's been around here, and that's just supposed to... That's supposed to be your anti-sway. Well, those springs aren't strong enough to keep them from doing this. And when I was driving it down to the barn last night, it, this uh, this one was doing it worse. It'd go over, smack the tire, and then once it smacked the tire, it just kept bouncing off. So what I'm gonna do is make it like they went to on the 55 series and put a spring in between the arms that'll go right here so i gotta weld a tab on each arm and i'm gonna make it out of this this is actually a piece of that heater housing we bought for the 1800 that we ended up not using because we modified another piece to eliminate this so we didn't have to drill any holes in the fender so This should be a fairly quick deal. Just whack a couple tabs off of this and punch a couple holes in it. I already went down and measured the ones on my 1955 so I can get them kind of halfway close, but. All right, I got my tabs cut out. So now I got some quick mill work to do here. First thing I gotta do is get zeroed on my part. And I'm not sure. If dad had this thing... Yep. I always zero off the back of the vise because the... that... or that dimension will never change in relation to the spindle because this never moves no matter what width your part is. So you, you only, you, yeah, so you'd only have to ever pick that zero up one time if you're running a batch of parts. So, and then when I'm picking up my, uh, when I'm picking up my X, if it's a part like this where it doesn't have to be right dead nuts. I'll usually just eyeball it and get the uh, part even with the edge of the vise. Otherwise, I'll put a uh, use this as an end stop that slides in the keyway on the table so you can get your part right in the exact spot every time. And then you only got to pick up your zero on that one time if you're running more than one part. Let you run that over. Come on. Reset. Then that t that tip is two tenths wide, so you run it over. Do a tenth reset and now you're right square and if you had a different tool in there you'd be right smack on the cor on the edge of the part with the center of the tool uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. 
pada That'll be plenty big. Yeah. Now run in half inch. Come on. And then I never did measure how wide that is. One inch need to be in a half inch. There we go. There's one. Man, I hate the smell of burnt powder coat. Stick this one in. Line it up with the edge of the vise, just about. There's two. One of these days I'll have to make a video and make a little bit more complicated part so you can see the whole process, but that's kind of the short and sweet version. Okay, ready to start getting them welded on. And the first thing I did, since I'm welding on the tractor, is I came over and unhooked the battery. So whenever you're welding on something that's got an electrical system, you always want to unhook the battery. Because if you get a bad ground or something and some freak, something arch or something when you're welding, you can uh, damage the electrical system. But uh, if you unhook the battery, the tractor's dead, so you can't hurt nothing because nothing's grounded. So there's no complete circuits. But um, I ground all the uh, powder coat off of the tabs because it's just going to burn off when I weld it anyway. And I... Got it marked out on the arms where I wanted them, and then I got a magnet to hold it on there while I tack it. Hopefully, I didn't want to do a bunch of grinding on there because I didn't want to take any more paint off my head too, so I'm hoping that the socket on there has got enough good surface to ground off of. If I put the helmet on. Shazam! Go ahead and do the other side and put spring on there. I 
All right, tabs are welded on. Now I'll just have to, I don't know why I close that because I need these. They make these springs where they, they come right up against themselves, so I need to snip a hunk off. So you can take it on and off the tractor without using tools. Gum it. Got it. There we go. And the reason it's all pulled up funny is I got it set up for running category one implements right now. Normally it'd be right about there. But to run cat or run to switch from cat two to cat one, all you do is there's spacer blocks that go in between the arm and this uh, wear plate, and then you change out the center link to a cat one ball and then they run cat one cat two implement and i was brush chopping with it last so but that takes care of that project and i'm not going to bother painting the tabs because if you uh if it was bigger stuff like where i was scat welding here on the fender to try to straighten it out and stuff i'll shoot primer on it but little stuff like this i like to uh just let it stay bare metal and let it rust a little bit and then it blends in with the tractor and you can't hardly tell it doesn't belong there so but on to the next project 